is Dr. Christian Cox. And to review our final case, this is uh, thoracic 37. And this is a patient uh, status post motor vehicle accident uh, in this overall section on trauma. Uh, I thought this was a good case uh, because not only does it uh, have a don't miss finding on it uh, on the chest radiograph, but in addition to that uh, also has multiple additional trauma findings. So here we are lucky enough to have a comparison chest radiograph uh, in this younger uh, patient, mid-30s. On the right, you know, on their prior, they have some hardware in the cervical spine. They've got a little bit of a tortuous aorta and uh, lungs look pretty clear. We look at the current exam. Uh, first, we wanna take note of tubes and lines. So this patient is intubated. That endotracheal tube tip looks about two centimeters from the carina. It might be a little low. Uh, and then we've got an enteric tube, which comes down and deviates to the right in the superior mediastinum. It also has its side port in the uh, thoracic uh, on the distal esophagus above the expected GE junction. So we would want that advanced as well. We see the hardware as we saw before, but even though this is a portable chest radiograph, they're a little bit rotated, even with that, this superior mediastinum is way too wide. So this is our classic widening of the mediastinum that tells us that there is something wrong. It is at the level of the aortic arch. The aortic arch looks enlarged and poorly defined. What I would consider to be the uh, aortic knob uh, is displaced from the, the actual border. So there's potentially something adjacent to or expanding the aorta. Also along the medial superior aspect of the lung apex that um, looks a little bit thickened to me. We have some of that on the contralateral side. So there is some body habitus contributing to these shadows at the apices. But this is uh, a portion of likely developing apical cap. So left apical cap, widening of the superior mediastinum, and displacement of this uh, enteric tube are all indicators that this is a rule out aortic injury case, right? Until proven otherwise, this is uh, an aortic injury. Also, we see increased density in the retrocardiac heart or retrocardiac lung, and we've got volume loss associated with it. Some of the ribs are showing some step off associated with fractures. So let's look at the CT to go along with this. So almost immediately following this, they obtain a CTA chest. So typically in a chest, abdomen, and pelvis, uh, trauma scan, they do the chest in a arterial phase and then go through the full chest and then they'll backtrack a little bit and catch the entire abdomen in more of a portal venous phase. That allows for the best evaluation of vascular structures in the chest, uh, but the best evaluation of solid organs in the abdomen. As we come down to the aortic arch, we're already seeing a bunch of uh, kind of space occupying opacity that should not be there. Also, the aortic arch should be smooth and rounded, and here we've got this uh, linear defect within the distal aortic arch. So the, one of the other main reasons I wanted to show this case is because this is 
aortic transection. Transection, not dissection. Uh, another term for this is acute traumatic aortic injury or ATAI. And this is a medical emergency. This is not uh, a dissection and is it only involving, you know, the, the ascending aorta. This is anywhere that this occurs in the setting of trauma is an indication of transection and is a medical emergency uh, and surgical uh, uh, treatment. This uh, deformity in the aorta is irregular and going into the surrounding mediastinum. So this person is actually, they've transected the aorta, they're bleeding into the mediastinum, and we're seeing this hematoma that's displacing the esophagus, it's uh, displacing the aorta relative to the uh, mediastinum, and uh, it, it, that hematoma extends along the paraesophageal distribution. There may be injury to the esophagus as well, but uh, most of this is hematoma. And uh, again, aortic transection and uh, a medical emergency requiring surgery. We also see some additional findings here. We see consolidation in the lung. We see a small uh, pleural fluid collection, which, uh, you know, looks pretty low in density, but may have some element of uh, hemothorax. Uh, the left ribs also demonstrate multiple uh, fractures. So here's a step off as a very nice example of a mildly displaced posterior left rib fracture. Uh, and we're gonna see other fractures anteriorly. Here's a nice example of a buckle fracture in the anterior rib. Um, there's some air adjacent to that, so maybe a little tiny bit of uh, soft tissue emphysema. So there's a more pr pronounced uh, displaced fracture. So we've got multiple fractures in the posterior left ribs. And this uh, volume loss, while it may have some element of bleeding into it, uh, also may have aspiration uh, or alternative uh, plugging that's leading to the atelectasis down here with adjacent rib fractures. Some of this may represent contusion as well. I don't see a lot of uh, cystic changes in it to suggest to me that there is a, a pulmonary laceration, another mildly displaced anterior rib fracture. So altogether, this is a complex case, but I think a really great example on both chest radiograph and CT of aortic transection or acute traumatic aortic injury. Thank you.